Okay, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start because Shauna ran out to go get my, the adapter. Um, uh, my name is Mike Bonomo. Um, I'm, I'm actually a student here right now at UVU. Um, I'm also the co-founder of a company called Kistix. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of Kistix. Um, it's a fun little company that me and my buddy started here <coughs> two years ago. But um, I just kind of wanted to probably just start out. I, I was in this, I'm actually in this class this semester. I'm enrolled in it. I haven't been. I went to this class all last semester and I wasn't enrolled, so it's cool and I like it. But um, so when I was in it, I loved when people would kind of tell me their stories, how they started out, where they came from. Um, so I'll kind of just give you a little bit uh, of a background on uh, how, we, how we started up. Um, what we did, and if any of you, for those who don't know what Kistix is, it's a, uh, it's a lip balm that comes in two compatible flavors. You get one, you can give one to your partner when you kiss, flavors mix, make a new flavor, and it makes kissing way funner. So, way more fun, sorry. Um, so, it's pretty, it's goofy little idea. Um, the idea actually came from my business partner, um, Dallas. He, he thought of it when he was in high school. A lot of us think about kissing back then, maybe not so much now, maybe you're in college, I'm married, so I think about kissing a lot less, I guess. But, uh, so he would go to prom and uh, he'd have chapped lips because he's outside all day, you know, extreme sports, things like that, and he uses the excuse that his lips were always chapped, so that's why he didn't get the kiss. So um, he thought, I need to have this cool idea, maybe it'll, it'll help up ramp his game the ladies, so he had this idea, Kistix. Um, and actually, I met Dallas, we served an LDS mission together in Argentina, and uh, it was super weird because this kid would like have his missionary journal and like sketches of this kissing lip balm, and it was like super weird. And I felt super bad because I thought he was just like really lonely, but, uh, um, <laughs> It turned out, it, it ended up being a really, you know, it, it turned into a, a college project that we, we did here um, when we came back. Uh, we, were, we were in a, I think it was actually, no, it wasn't Pete's class. Um, but we used it as a, as a, just a project, basically. And uh, we, we had samples made up, um, and then we kind of handed it out to class, let people try it. People seemed to like it, so... We decided we're going to produce more. We'll maybe put a label on it, make it look nice. They were all just in white tubes. Um, didn't look good, but they, they tasted okay, and people seemed seem to uh, like it a little bit. So um, that's where, uh, that's kind of where after class we actually got held back. And my history is if I get held back after class, I know I've done something wrong. Um, that's how it's always been for me. But this time it seemed to be a little bit different. It was an awesome experience for me. Um, he, professor held us back and said, wow, this is a really cool idea. Um, he suggested that we actually do it, that we actually try and start a business with this brand new kissing lip balm idea. Um, and it was kind of funny because we both had to, we had to swallow our pride a little bit because it's two guys with a kissing lip balm. Um, I'm married to a girl and, and uh, <laughs> so is Dallas. He has a little girl, a um, little baby girl. And so it was a little bit weird at first, but then uh, we, we got over it and it's fine. But uh, it, it was a little bit funny at first. Um, but uh, so we, we started this. Uh, we decided to get some, some samples made from actual chemists who knew what they were doing. Dallas and I, neither of us know anything about chemistry. Um, we didn't know really how to make, we didn't know how to make lip balm. We didn't know how to make it match and mix. We didn't know how to do any of that. So um, at this point, we were two super broke college students um, thinking that this might turn into a good, fun idea. We didn't know where it would go, but at the time, um, it gave us something to do. So we, we were happy with it. So. We, uh, we priced out some formulation, right? We called chemists all over the country, and we get quotes back, $15,000, $60,000, $30,000, whatever it was. And like I said, we had no money. Um, 
like I barely could afford tu tuition. I didn't have a scholarship, anything like that. Um, so we, uh, we tried to go about this the best way we could. And we called all of the chemists back and said that they are actually in a competition for our business. And uh, we made it seem like it was a lot bigger deal than it really was because we were just trying to get the stuff for free. But uh, we told them to, to apply for this competition. They had to do all of the chemistry free on their dollar. Um, and we had 13 people that were originally interested. Once we told them they had to do it for free, it got cut down to six. And out of the six, they all did it for free. We picked the best one and we saved like $30,000. So it was pretty cool. We got super lucky. And then we told them that because each, each chemistry is usually tied to a fulfillment center. So we'll say, you guys can fulfill our lip balm and you can do our stuff for free. And it ended up working. It was super lucky. I have no idea how we got them to do that. But um, from there, now we have a product, right? We have, we have this lip balm. Um, we didn't really know how to do, we didn't know how to market yet. We, didn't, we, had, we had it. We didn't know what people wanted to see. We didn't know how to sell it quite yet. Um, so what we did is we had students pretty much design everything for us. Again, it was free. Um, I guess we really love free. Just don't like having to pay too much. So we went over to the graphic design department, um, told them our idea, and we, we convinced a student to use it as her senior project. Um, so she designed our logo, designed our, um, all of our graphics and things, and they've been tweaked since and, and redone since. But uh, to get it up and running originally, uh, we had it all done by students. Um, I happen to have a buddy, because now, now we have, a, we have a, a product, right? We can sell this. It's got a box. It's got packaging. It's got a logo. Um, and now we wanted a website. And we wanted a website so people could buy it on there. Um, so I called up a buddy of mine, and I told him I'd pay him $100 if he built a website. It was super not worth his time, um, especially since I kept calling him and asking him to make a bunch of changes because I didn't like it too much. But he did it for $100. So uh, we got our website up, $100. We pretty much were in this thing $100 to start it up, um, which is pretty cool. We were way excited about that. Um, we, had, we had heard how much it normally starts to take a biz to start up a business. Obviously, we didn't have that cash, so you, you find some other way, I guess. So um, at this point, um, we have this thing. We're, we're wanting to sell it now. So. Like I said, we have no idea. I, I was a security salesman. I sold for, I'm sure there's some of you in here that have sold security systems in here before, um, or pest control, whatever it is. And so I knew how to sell that, but I didn't know how to sell like a $4 item to a bunch of retailers. Um, it was a completely different world, world for me. Um, and same, same with my business partner, Dallas. So uh, we just we started attending shows, trade shows, things like that, and it ended up selling. It was doing okay. We got in some small boutiques. I think our our first our very first account we were so excited about. It. We made we sold one. Uh, it was five dollars. We made five dollars on our very first show. And we were super excited about it, and uh, he ended up the guy that bought it liked it, and it was uh, for a store called like Granny's Trunk Stuffers in like Manti or something like that. Um, but we were super stoked about it. So we got, we got all excited about it. We had sold our first store. And so then we decided, OK, we're just going to keep going. Um, all this while, we're still, I mean, we're still students. I'm still a student. And this was, this was three years ago. And I'd already been in school two years at that point. So school goes a little bit slower when you're trying to do a business. But, um, so anyways, we, uh, we, started, we started selling this, this lip balm. We, we were actually doing it here. Has anyone here done True Wolverine? Like you go out, you kiss somewhere? No? No one's done that? Wow. I was not in your advertisement OK. Yes, thank you for talking, by the way. That was great. <laughs> um, so OK, cool. So we did True, we did true Wolverine. Um, that was one of our very first, that's the first time we've ever tried marketing anything. Um, so it was pretty fun, and it, it ended up doing, doing well. It's not like we made a bunch of money, because I think we handed it all out for free. But um, we, started, we started to kind of grasp what we were supposed to be doing, right, with selling and, and then marketing this. And, and keep in mind, I haven't even, at this point, I haven't got into my 
my business program. I'm still doing general, so I, know, I literally know nothing about business at all. Um, so we're, we're just trying to figure this out. And uh, one day we decide we're going we're gonna to buy an ambulance. Um, man, that was so stupid. <laughs> so we buy this ambulance. It was like a 1985 ambulance. We went and drove to Idaho and bought it from like Boise State. They haven't drove it forever. We wrapped it in our stuff. We, we, we got our logo and put it on there. And we put like a, I put a, took a picture of me and my wife kissing. And we seriously like plastered that on the side of an ambulance. Um, you know, like, it was, at the time, it was pretty cool. I was super excited that we had an ambulance. We'd come do parties and throw the lights on and, and whatever. But um, it wasn't the best financial decision to buy an ambulance when you have no money. Um, so we ended up getting an SBA loan to help us with our other startup costs because we spent all of our money on an ambulance um, that we ended up selling later, and it got on Doomsday Preppers. I don't know if you guys have seen that show. Um, but anyway, so we, uh, we got to the point where we're, we're out of money, and uh, we, we never really had any money to start with. Um, so we needed, we needed to get an SBA loan. Um, and if any of you have tried to get an SBA loan, it's really seriously very hard. Um, we applied, I think, for like 250 grand, because that's what we felt like we needed, right, to, to get employees to help us work and then to help us distribute and do all of this stuff. And uh, the bank asked us to write up a, a business plan. Um, and I had no idea. Like, I don't know what's supposed to be in a business plan at that point. So we seriously sat down and we wrote three pages. And about a page and a half of it was like pictures and like Dallas's drawings from his missionary journal that we like photocopied. Um, so it's like blue pen. Um, and we, uh, we submitted it. We submitted that for an SBA loan. And uh, they, ended up, they ended up giving us 50000 to start out instead of, instead of 250. But um, I just couldn't believe we got it at all because we seriously did it with like a pen drawing. But um, I, I, the point was when we, when we were doing that, we, we put kind of our passion into it. We put our ideas and what we wanted and our goals and our, our dedication and our drive. And so we, we went and we had to... We basically had to pitch them on, on why we wanted it and why we felt like it would be a good investment for them. Um, so, and, and it ended up turning out. So at this point, we've got, we've got $50,000. We're, we're, we're seriously very small still. Um, th that took us about six months to get. They asked for a, a revision of it. And then we went, we went from, uh, from sketch drawings with blue pen to like iPhone snapshots, snapshots of our, of our stuff that we were wanting to produce, and then from there actually got into an actual photo with like a camera. Um, so it it evolved, but and eventually we got there. But um, so we've got 50 grand. That's awesome. That's great. What they did with that 50 grand, they said it's all completely tied to inventory, so we can't use it for anything other than buying product. And that major, it was just a terrible. <laughs> It was a terrible loan. So if we went belly up, they could basically take our product, sell it, and they're not out anything. But we couldn't use it for salaries. We couldn't use it for paying employees. We couldn't pay. We couldn't even use it for graphic design. Nothing like that. So it was sort of a useless loan. And and I guess I can't complain too much because of the drawings that we gave them. Um, but it, I, it bought us products. So we were able to. We were able to go in, we'd sell our product, we'd get money in the bank from that, and then we'd, we'd pretty much just blow that on trying to pay for the people that we hired to help us do the work. So it was, it was rapidly going pretty quick. So we get to the point where, we're, and, and we're working this all for free, right? You can't, you can't just start paying yourself, unless you get tons of funding right off the bat with your brand new company, you can't pay yourself anything. So um, what Dallas and I did, and we got super lucky because we got, we got the same jobs. What we, we did is kiss sticks. We worked at 9 to 5. That's when everyone's working. That's when they're on emails, people answering back, phone calls, cold calling, whatever it is. So 9 to 5, we would work kiss sticks. And then from midnight to 7 a.m., we were down here at the Winco on 800 North, and we were stocking cereal boxes. Um, but it was kind of cool because Dallas was there, and we were both there stocking them at the same time. 
so we'd get to talk about Kistix while we're putting the stupid cereal boxes away. And, uh, and it worked, it, you know, we, had, we paid the bills, I guess, sort of, but I never saw, never saw my family or my wife or anything like that. I'll let, I'll let you figure it out because <laughs> I don't have no idea. Um, so, we, so we were stocking, stocking shelves. Um, it was seriously, I did that for three months, and it was like the worst time of my life. Um, I was always tired. I was like never happy. So, and I told you before I had sold security systems. So um, I, I talked Dallas into going to Texas with me. We just went out and we sold security systems uh, to try and, try and pay bills while we're and even fund the company. Um, so while we were while we were out there, don't don't worry about it. I don't need it. It's fine. I had a PowerPoint, but we're not going to use it, I guess. Um, so while we're while we're out there, and I don't know if anyone's been to Texas, it's freaking hot, um, especially during the summer. It was like 115 degrees, and we're out there knocking doors. I seriously looked like a grease monkey. I was knocking doors and like trying to wipe sweat. And I would like wipe more sweat on my, you know, on my forehead from my forearm. It was super gross. Um, so I was like, I was miserable out there too. And so me and Dallas, it was super funny. We're, we both just were knocking. It was like three o'clock in the afternoon. I couldn't even walk anymore. I was so tired. And we we're just sitting on a curb. I was actually laying down on the curb, kind of in like the fetal position. And Dallas was like <laughs> leaning up against a tree, trying to figure out life. And uh, <laughs> And we were, so we were sitting there talking about Kissix. What are we going to do? How are we going to move forward? And then Dallas had this idea, like, we need to get on reality TV. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. But what are we going to do, like, call Kim Kardashian or something? And I don't know. But uh, ha has anyone heard of the show Shark Tank? Yeah. You guys have heard of that? Um, so I, at that point, I hadn't heard of it. And Dallas, Dallas has. He's like, we need to get on this show Shark Tank. And he was telling me about it. You go, you pitch your product to this panel of millionaires and billionaires, and they can beat you up, and you can, they can decide if you're worth an investment um, or not, and they can kick you to the curb either way. But at this point, um, getting out of my fetal position off the sidewalk in Texas, I'm like, I'll do anything right now to not be knocking doors in this heat. Um, so we decided to go look into it. Let's go see what, what this shark tank is all about. So. Um, we were in Dallas, Texas at the time, and uh, we went back home, got online, and looked up like when tryouts or whatever, uh, when those might be. And uh, it just, we got super lucky because two days later on that Saturday in Austin was open tryouts. So we're like, oh my gosh, that's a sign. Do you want me to show the clip? Sh uh, yeah, if you, can, if you can figure that out. Um, so. <laughs> So we, uh, we our, and our, our idea was, okay, we're going to go to this, we're going to go to these tryouts, um, we're just going to go pitch it and kind of see what happens. So we kind of packed up suitcases. We weren't really sure what to wear because it's just tryouts, you're not actually like pitching investors. Um, so we went there and there was a line of 5,000 people um, by the time we got there. So we're just, and every, everybody was in a suit, right? Everybody, nice tie, is somewhere in three piece with the vest and uh, we were in like Kistix t-shirts. Um, so our idea was, well, let's try to stand out. There's 5,000 people. By the time we got done, there was 8,000 people. We just took a number. It's like American Idol, sort of, but a lot less people. Um, but you wait in line, just wait for them to call your name. And uh, so what we decided to do is, uh, there's, a, there's a shorter one, so you don't have to watch 15 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. Like a two minute one of, um, somewhere but um, so our idea was let's just stand out let's like make sure that people remember us recognize us um, so how they how they ha they basically put you in a big group and you get 30 seconds pitch idea and you just go from one person to the next person so everybody's got their business plans everyone's MBA students and um, we're just kind of whatever I'm still not done with my generals um, so so we decided uh, let's let's stand out. 
So we actually were, we were in like, we in ties and shirts and everything. We looked, we looked decent. And uh, they're like, okay, hey, you're 30 seconds, go. We like literally, like Superman ripped our shirts off to like kiss stick shirt underneath. And we're like, we're kiss sticks and we're sweet and we're cool. And this is what we do. And it was like the weirdest. Everyone's like, everyone looked at us like, you guys are so stupid for just blowing your opportunity just now. And, uh, and then the, we were the only people out of the group that like, hey, you guys, we'll call you if we're interested and you guys can stay. So everyone's like, what the heck? They rip their shirts off and they get to go on TV. So um, it, worked, it worked for us. Um, so we, we pitched it. There's a bunch of little clips. Yeah, I think this one, that one's probably, this one? it just shows. So yeah, that one like shows the. Uh, Fans missed it. Missed it. Okay. Um, so we go through like, it was like three months. I, I didn't go back out summer selling. When, when they said that we could come back and send them a video, I, I flew home like two days later because um, I was so sick of knocking. I wasn't about to finish. I was only out there for like seven weeks, but I still hated it. Um, so I flew back and we're getting all this stuff and, and uh, there was, there was 50,000 businesses that applied um, that season. And out of those 50,000, they pick 100 companies to come and pitch your idea. And out of those 100, they gave 55 people airtime. So the whole, the whole time that we were doing this, we, and we knew that going in, so we're like, we're going to stand out. We're going to stand out the whole time. So the next step after tryouts was you have to make like a home video of an answer, how much you want, why you need it. And Dallas and I, again, I don't know why we did this, but we decided to like go for this stupid thing again. And uh, we just like made the dumbest, the dumbest home video. Like I'm out like hitting tennis balls in the sky and he's like dunking a volleyball on a kid's basketball hoop. Like I don't even know what the point was for it and Kistics. I don't know. Um, but we answered their questions and then we got our, our wives and we made them act like they were just random girls and I just like ran up and kiss my wife in a store with it and she's like oh that's pretty good so um, they found out later they were our wives and they're like that was kind of lame but it looked good in the video <laughs> so they, they bring us back we end up flying out and then they let us pitch um, so I'll show you this this clip here real quick um, but you have to know when we were in there for about an hour and 15 minutes and they show you like like 10 minutes or whatever of what actually happens but when you first walk out they have like these little X's taped on the ground where I'm supposed to go stand. And then they make you stand there for 45 seconds looking at, and if you guys have, if you haven't seen Shark Tank, they have like some well-known people on there, like, like Mark Cuban. Um, he's probably the most famous. He's the Dallas Mavericks owner. Um, but uh, they, make, they make you stand, so these are powerful people. They make you stand there for 45 seconds just looking at them. Um, it's the most awkward thing ever. So, and we've got producers that we're working with, and they said that I was standing there, and my bottom lip was just like trembling, um, and and they're like, he's he's gonna he's gonna crack, he's gonna crack, he's not gonna he's not gonna know what to do, and uh, and now that I think about it, like I totally was, I was totally trembling, I was scared out of my mind, um, but then we started pitching, and that's when I started feeling a little more comfortable because we had practiced it like a billion times. So once we started talking, it was okay, but beforehand, I was, I was literally like shaking. Um, but this, I, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it's like two minutes, three minutes, and you can kind of just see what happened, and I'll tell you where it's gone from there. It is Kistix. Kistix is a high quality lip balm that comes packaged in two compatible flavors. One for you and one for your partner. When you kiss, these amazing flavors combine creating a chemistry reaction that's bursting with flavors and aroma. Now we have several delicious combinations here for you, including strawberry daiquiri and pina colada. So when you kiss, you get Miami Vice, just like the drink. <laughs> we have peaches and cream, raspberry and lemonade, and our best seller, fire and ice, where one heats up while the other cools down, creating a fun tingling sensation that you will never forget. Now, fortunately for you guys, we brought with us our fully functional kissing booth. So, a, a kissing booth always features a beautiful lady, so Barbara, we were wondering if you could come down and help us on this one. Hold it right there. Who's going to kiss Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> I love it. 
like Mike said, this is our best seller, Fire and Ice. Okay? Hey, did you invite him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Get down here and waiting, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, you're already hot enough, so for you, we got some ice to cool you down. So there's some ice for you. You can go ahead and just put it on. This is the fire. Since fire. You're, we figured since you're, you know, a little hot-headed, we've got the fire for you, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Barbara, are you really going to kiss Kevin? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> here you go. We'll find the fire out for you. Right. Wow, tingly. Feels good. Mmm. Ooh. Listen, Barbara, if I turn to stone, I'm going to be pretty unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss. 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 Oh, Lord, I'm going to get it. Oh. I didn't get there. No, you have right. to hold it for just a second. So oh. Get oh. Oh. Let's hold it, sweetie. Ready? Hold it. You got to hold it a little longer. Oh, my God. Tasty. Oh. Very tasty. Oh. Yes. That's so disgusting. Oh. Did you feel anything? Did you feel anything? Oh, definitely God. get a uh, change in flavor. So the question is, who's feeling the chemistry and ready to invest in us? What? So do you have any sales? Well, 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 just for the record, I want to say, you know how when you kiss someone can change your feelings? This didn't change it. Then. <laughs> it confirmed. It confirmed. Well, you it all. always remember it. So. Oh God. Yeah. So the whole world. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's what that was like the highlight of what happened, and it was super funny. Like. You could kind of see Robert, one of the one, Robert Herjavec from Herjavec Group, pulls out his cell phone, and like they were all all the sharks, like they pulled out their cell phones and they're recording it on their phones. It was super funny. So it's kind of cool to see that side of them. But um, what ended up happening? So we we went through our numbers. Uh, we pulled out a PO that we had had from Walgreens. Um, we told them why we felt we were worth, however much we said we were worth, and uh, we ended up getting an investment from Mark Cuban. So um, for the past, so that, that actually aired March 2nd last year. So for the past year, uh, Mark Cuban has been our business partner. Um, so it's really cool. It's super weird still. Like I'll, I'll be getting an email from him, and then like two hours later, I'll see him fighting with that back and forth thing with Kobe that they've been doing lately. So um, but it's pretty cool to see him on TV and, and, and then get an email from him the next day. Um, but that didn't... That doesn't necessarily, so we got $200,000 from, from Mark for 40% of our company. Um, we thought at the time that that was really going to, and, and it did, it, it changed a lot. Um, it, it really helped catapult um, our business from where it was to where it, where it is now. Um, but we were thinking at the time that $200,000 was going to last us forever. Um, and uh, a lot of it was gone by the time the show even aired. So um, we filmed it in September. Um, and then it aired that March, so it's like five months, whatever that is. Um, and so five months, a lot of it's gone, you know, because you're trying to upgrade your website, you're trying to do all of this stuff. You want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row um, so that you can capitalize on this, on such a big opportunity. Um, and, so, and so we tried to, and we, I don't know why we thought or what we were thinking, but we were just... Sitting, sitting down, had our phones on our desk, just waiting for Walmart and Target to call. You know, we were just on this TV thing, so right now it's super cool. They're going to call us, and, and we'll be millionaires tomorrow. Um, we're super <laughs> excited for that. Um, it didn't happen, though, surprisingly. Um, so we, we had to invest more resources into actually calling these people, figuring out how to go about doing it, and... And we're in all of that process uh, sort of now. We've, we've landed most of them. Um, since the show, we've, we've got contracts with uh, most major retailers in the country. And uh, we've expanded into 14 different countries. And so it's, it's going really well. Um, and, and it's done better than we had ever hoped to as a, as a college project, especially on my mission, looking at it in this kid's journal as pen drawings. But, um, so it's kind of cool to see where it, where it started out as and, and, and where it's come from. But uh, there's, still, there's still a lot of work. Um, we, we've, done, we've done quite a bit in, in sales, but 
as your sales go up, so do your costs, your expenses go up. Um, so there's, it's a lot, it's a lot harder than, than you, you sell a big account and now, and now you've got tons of money. I wish it was like that. Um, but, uh, it, but it has been super fun. We did, we did get, uh, you know, super lucky with going on the show. It helped really, like I said, it helped really catapult us and we, and we focused on, uh, focused on Mark Cuban's kind of, um, reputation of, of having a lot of money that he was our he was like our personal bank um, and he actually kind of did say that and that's why we've been able to grow so quickly and not go belly up is is uh, when you when you get a PO you, you're gonna have to finance that and your your vendors are expecting terms and and most of these major retailers are not gonna pay you for 60 to 90 days um, I think it's really stupid I feel like business should be I give you my stuff and you pay me the money but uh, it doesn't work that way. They want to they want to stretch it out 90 days so that they're not out any, and and you've got to do all of these uh, programs. So you just basically have to make sure that there is absolutely no risk for the retailers, and you just assume it all. Um, so if any of you are looking into going into retail, just remember that you're going to have all the risk, and they're not going to have any. Kind of sucks, but um, so that's that's what you've got to do. So we've uh, we've really been growing, and, and like I said, it's it's not it's not easy by any means. We've been we've still been doing like 80-hour work weeks, um, which is fine. We're kind of used to it now, especially after working Winco all freaking night long. Um, it, it's it's not too bad. But one thing that uh, that we really needed to focus on, and and I had a really hard time with this. Um, speaking at something like this and, and things like that, I, I always had a hard time with networking. Um, which really, and now I look back, and networking is like the best, that's the best thing that you could do right now for your business. Um, just going and meeting other professionals in, in, in whatever field it may be, that's, that's something that we started doing. Dallas, Dallas had done it from the very beginning. I was always kind of more, I was a little bit more shy. I didn't really want to go put myself out there. I didn't want to go and try and talk business to people that have been doing business for 20 years who know a lot more about me. I was, I was just really intimidated. Um, so if I could recommend anything or something to anyone who's wanting to start a business or thinking about it or even going into whatever professional field you may be doing, um, networking will drastically change the improvement of what you're trying to do. Um, I've, I've met a lot of great people doing networking, um, finding people that have honestly helped me out and helped my company out quite a bit because I, I ran into them and they were able to get me better pricing or they were able to hook me up with somebody else who, who did something really important that I needed. Um, and so going forward, that's, that's something I would recommend. Activate, activate your network. Talk to anyone and everyone who will, who will listen to you. And, uh, and there's a lot of people, especially here in Utah, there's a lot of people that are willing to help. Um, I know my door is my door's always open. I, I love talking to people that are starting up businesses. Um, if I can help limit some mistakes, um, I'd be more than happy to do it for anybody because we, we've wasted a lot of money on mistakes. Um, if anyone's thinking about doing a mall kiosk, talk to me before you do it. Um, <laughs> And that's what I pretty much spent my Christmas and Thanksgiving doing a while ago. Yeah. That was in South Carolina. Yes, it was. I was working right next to Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, man, that was that was a really rough time for me. Um, we were we were uh, yeah. Well, you you saw it. We had this, uh, and that was when I, that was with our old style packaging that we just had the students do. Um, we actually had we had people come over to our booth and. Uh, uh, we we do a little survey. Hey, what do you think we're selling? Um, and like the majority of people thought we were selling tools for dads, and so we we were doing something wrong. I still don't know. But we had it up on like wooded pegboards that I spray painted, um, trying to save money. So um, it just didn't go well. And those booths are pretty expensive. So and uh, I I was too cheap to hire somebody to sit there and work it. So I. I sat there and I worked it. How, how long are those things open? Like 12 hours a day? Longer? 11 hours a day. I'd sit there for like 11 or 12 hours a day and I'd sell one like every hour. Um, so it got super old. But um, 
you know, you learn, you learn from your mistakes. Um, and there's, there's tons of kiosks and things that, you know, it, it just didn't work for me. Other companies, other products, other things, I'm sure it'll work for great. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Does anyone <laughs> have any questions? I know it's kind of early, but I used to, you know, student, so if you guys want to get out early, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I'm just uh, kind of backing up what you said about networking. You're talking to anyone and everyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm a behavioral investment manager for a YouTube channel, and we see songs and music uh, for videos. And so, you know, we, we're always trying to find new bands or artists that we like to use their music. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, it was like one in the morning, I was leaving them out at a gas station, and there was this, you know, six foot four, you know, 200 black guy standing outside, you know, I came up and asked him for a ride to uh, <laughs> some hotel in the supermarket thing back home. And, you know, I said, yeah, you know, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> it seemed like a cool enough guy, but, you know, like, I didn't get the floor by asking him one, but it was kind of like an odd request at one in the morning. And it was a great place to go. But we got to talking, and uh, he ended up being, like, a super cool guy, and he was, uh, you know, rapper. And he had his laptop That's sweet. And see, in that situation, is mutually beneficial. He's, he's going to get views that he never would have got, and you've got a song that you probably wouldn't have found. So that's why, yeah, thank you for that. That's awesome. Um, and I have, I have a lot of stories that are, that are really similar to that, where it's you talk to somebody that really probably have no business talking to, really, um, but they know somebody who can really help you out, or they've you know, done something. So... Yeah, that's great. That's seriously really cool. Um, activate, like you said, activating that network and talking to whoever. Yeah. So you, you obviously partnered with Mike. What benefit did he give you? Was he like giving you that one shirt and show shoe, or are you like? Hey, yeah. My um, is actually, it's actually kind of different. We're his first retail company that he's that he's had. He's a he's a he's a technician. He knows software. He knows computer programming. And so he's used to building this awesome formula, whatever, uh, software program, and then selling his company for millions or whatever it ends up being. Um, so he, he pretty much told us, and he, it doesn't show you on the show, he says, I'm really taking the chance on you guys. Um, I don't know anything about retail, so you guys are really going to have to go and do it. Um, we've, we've used his name, which has helped a lot. Um, we use him for credibility, but as far as selling and, and contracts and contacting everybody, um, that's me and Dallas have pretty much had to do it all. Yep. So for like your purchase orders and stuff, instead of going to a bank saying, hey, we need a million dollars worth of purchase orders, you just call up Mark. Yeah. Well. Yeah, exactly. And, and we basically pay him back. So we pay him back that money at like an SBA rate. So it's way cheaper than going to a bank. Um, that's one of the things he says is, if we can grow really fast, he says he's not going to punish us for selling. That's what he wants us to do, go sell, sell, sell. Um, so he said, don't worry about that. I'll fund your POs. Just submit the PO to me, and then we'll, he'll handle it. And, and that's, that's really been a big reason why we've been able to grow so quickly and not run into those. No. Nope. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's like a 5%. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> super lucky. <laughs> what was your total sales for 2012? Um, 2012, we were at 1.2 million. Um, and that was really came from, so this, this show aired in um, March, like I said, 2000, yeah, 2012. Um, we contacted, we started contacting everyone about three months after that. And so the, what those sales came from was basically the international sales. We've signed the contracts with everyone here, but like I said, their terms are three or four months, so it's really hard to get paid out on those when you, when you get those purchase orders. So what we do for international, we have internationally, they, they basically have to wire us the money before we even send our product out to them. So we're able to, and they, they pay for the shipping and all of that stuff. So international, I love doing international sales because it's, it's so much less stress on me. 
it's, I get the money and then say, okay, here you go. I don't have to extend terms. I don't have to do anything like that. But so most of that, a lot of that came from international. So I'm making an assumption with product B. Is that in their native language and you're labeling, or is the labeling still the same? Each country is a little bit different. Um, when you go outside of the states, a lot, a lot of countries like seeing made in America or made in USA. Mm -hmm. um, and so they like to just keep it in the English. I know with Korea, Korea, we wrote it in Korean. Um, same with Japanese. It's so weird seeing your stuff in Japanese. I have no idea what it says. It's like chicken scratch, but um, it looks pretty cool. But for the most part, it's in English. And if they, if they want their own, uh, they can put like a label on it or we'll print it for them that way. Um, right now, we're currently in uh, Walgreens, Kmart. Um, we just we just met with Kroger, who is a, a big grocery chain. They have fifteen thousand stores. Um, Associated Foods, Super Value, Winn Dixie. Um, just <coughs> finishing up CVS and Rite Aid. So, what does your label look like then? Um, the logo, yeah. or it's it's the same logo that it's always been. Um, I don't know if I can find it for you. So like those boxes that you have? We'll see. Food. Yeah, we'll see if. Uh, if it loads. Um, that's it up there. And that's what, the, that's what the tubes all look like now. So that's not what they look like at first, but that's like the evolved version of it. So, yeah. Um, we just we just cold called <laughs> pretty much, and it and it's super annoying because if you try to cold call anyone, um, you pretty much say yeah go to one eight hundred Walgreens and then do their automated system and someone will send you an email, you know and and it usually never goes anywhere. But um, we actually uh, we did that and then we got in touch with a broker. A broker found out that we were trying to get in. Um, and then we worked that, that, that Walgreens deal took us two years to get. So we, we did that well before we went on to Shark Tank or anything like that. And it, uh, it was two years before we finally got that PO and got it in. So felt good finally once it was over. Yeah. Did you uh, change your offer to the sharks? Um, and what would you change? Yes and no. Um, I'm super grateful. Um, because of what it's been able to do for us, and I feel like it was worth 40%. Um, now, obviously, it's, it's worth a lot more, but I don't feel like we could have gotten to this point this fast without that. So, um, no, I don't think so. It, it, it did what we wanted it to do, and we went in there knowing a, an, an amount that we were willing to give up, and uh, we were willing to give up to 49%. They took, he took 40, so we came out feeling pretty good about it. Um, so I, I don't know that I'd change anything because of what it's been able to do for us so far. So, yeah. What is your early projection for the shark industry? Um, this year, uh, we're projecting to do, we're just, we're just capitalizing on international and then all of our contracts that we sign with the retailers here will hit. So we're hoping to do about seven to eight this year. <coughs> Um, what's been the step for you, or kind of things you had to go back yeah. to the business student and be like, so, I never knew how to do that before? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we pretty much, and, and just with these sharks, so these, these sharks are different than normal investors. Um, they, they evaluate things different than normal investors, but we, we pretty much watched each show up to that point. We YouTubed them all, probably watched them like 20 times each. So I knew everyone's buying patterns. I knew pretty much what everyone was going to ask. Um, and I feel like we went on there really prepared with everything. We knew the hard questions that we're, they were going to ask. And so we focused on those questions like, why do you feel like your company is worth a million dollars when you have 60000 in sales? So you've got to come up with an answer for that, which we did. But it's not. that was probably the hardest one. How are you getting that, um, that valuation on your company? Where is it coming from? What do you have in the works? What contracts do you have? What are your margins? Pretty much you just need to know all of that. And that's, that's kind of the hard part. So, yeah. so is this your career? 
Um, it is for now. We'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, it, it could be a fad. It could be a cool thing for a little bit. It could die out. I don't know. But for right now, we're just riding the wave. They they have a corporate they have a corporate buyer for each section. So there's a there's a front end buyer, there's a potato chips buyer, there's a gum buyer, whatever. You just have to get to the right department. Um, cold calling and brokering, and using rep groups. So people who have done it for a long time that are professional in there, they they'll take our product and they'll go rep it with a couple other products, and then they can decide if they like it or not. So. Thank you.